Okay. So before understanding programming language, first we need to understand what is a language, why we need a language, then we'll understand what is computer language, why do we need computer language, how exactly the computer language works, how computer understand the computer language, why computer not understand our own language, right? All these things we will discuss now. Right. So language basically used for communication, right? Now I'm communicating with you. I'm using one language called English or called Hindi, right? So language basically means to communicate with each other. And there are many languages in India. Uh, you can say Odia, English, Telugu, Hindi, Marathi, Bengali, Tamil. There are many human or regional languages which we are using to communicate with each other, right? So in general, it will define the definition of language so we can say that a language is nothing but a set of instructions. If you take English language or Hindi language that is used for communication, right? If you want to communicate with the other person, we are basically passing some instructions. We are passing some information which the opposite person can understand, right? Suppose if I'm saying something and if you don't understand, then what is the meaning of that language? No use. So when we are passing some instruction, then the opposite person should understand the instruction. If he is not understanding, then that is no meaning of using that language, right? And again, while using any particular language, right? We need to follow some instruction. We need to follow some rules. We need to follow some regulation, right? And in general language, in Odia, English, Telugu, Hindi, or any, any regional language, the rules is what? The grammar, right? If you know the grammar, then you can form a better sentence. If you don't know the grammar, then you cannot form a better sentence, right? So grammar is nothing but the rules and regulations that we follow to communicate with each other, right? Then what is the computer language? See, we are, uh, see, if we want to communicate with the computer, then we need to use some language that language should be understood by the computer. If we are using English or Hindi language, does the computer understand? No, computer will not understand. The reason is computer only understand binary language, right? So before uh, using, uh, before understanding why we need a computer language, suppose I am, uh, suppose I ask you one question. What is the factorial of five? Can anybody tell me? One twenty. One twenty. What is the factorial of one twenty? Can you tell immediately? No, no. Because it requires some time. Because it is a complex operation, right? The general operation as a human being, we can perform immediately. But to perform a comp complex operations like the factorial of one twenty, we cannot do that operation immediately, right? So for performing the complex operations we need a machine. Machine can perform the complex operation very easily, right? So this is the reason why we required machine, right? But uh, see, suppose user one wants to communicate with the user two, then he can use English or Hindi language, right? If the user two wants to communicate uh, with a PC, now the user wants to communicate with the PC, then what required? Why he wants to communicate with the PC? to perform a complex operations. Here in the image, it is uh, wrong because we are not uh, calculating the factorial of seven or uh, it's like 120, right? So you can consider. So in order to perform a complex operation, we require a machine. Machine in the sense, computer. And the computer only understand zero and one. So language we used to communicate is English, India, or any other regional language. But the same language I cannot use to communicate with the computer, right? You understood or not? Can I use Hindi or English language to communicate with the computer? No. Because Hindi or English is our uh, language. We are not uh, typing anything 01, 00, 01, right? So computer only understood those things, zero one, nothing else. So we are not using zero one to communicate with each other. So, so we, we cannot use our English or Hindi language to communicate with the 
computer because computer cannot understand our language computer can only understand the zero and the one right so that's why what we need to do the user to you can see the user to now wants to write some program right so for writing program what we need we need a computer language right so if you want if the user wants to communicate with the pc then the user needs to learn some programming language the programming language what are the programming language c c++ java c sharp these are nothing but your programming languages or you can say high level languages i am coming to this point right what is high level language what is low level language what are assembly language what are machine language i will come to that uh, point later part of this video so for now if the user wants to communicate with the pc the user has to learn at least one programming language is that clear see now so the yes, user uh, yeah the user understand one programming language then the user using that programming language can write the program yes or no suppose you know c then using c language you can write the program or not perform the addition operation suppose there is some variable a there is some another variable b you want to add a plus b and you want to print the result on the console in the monitor or console then you can write the program yes or no yes yes right but uh, but once you write the program do you think that did this program directly understood by the computer no, no. no. because the program what you are written you are only using english language na? so here a equals to 10 b equals to 20 c equals to a plus b print c everything is written using english language only this is the reason why this language are also called as a high level language because it is something similar to English, not exactly uh, uh, you can say English, but it is English only. So as you are type, writing the code using English language, so we are saying that it is a programming language, right? So once you write the program, then also this program cannot directly be understood by the computer because it is a yeah, programming language and the computer only understood binary language then what is required then we need to convert this program to binary language by the compiler right so there is something called compiler there is something called interpreter there is something called assembler they will compile your program and generate the machine code machine code is nothing but your machine understandable code machine understandable code is nothing but your binary code binary code is nothing but the code using zero and ones only understand once you generate the machine code you can see in this diagram so the compiler compile this program and generate the binary language you can see the binary language is something like this and this binary language will be understood by the computer operating system and the operating system once we provide this binary code to the pc pc in, uh, in the sense to uh, inside the ram then the cpu can access that and execute that and whatever information you will print in the output screen that means user cannot directly communicate with the pc we are saying we are communicating with the whatever typing whatever watching we are directly interacting with the computer no we are interacting with the computer via this you understood now yes yes we are yes, yes. Yes. So, you, so as a human being, we can uh, communicate with each other using English or Hindi language. But to communicate with the computer, we need a, to learn at least one programming language. Using that programming language, we can write uh, any program. And once you write that program, then the compiler will be there to convert that program into machine code. And once the machine code is generated, this machine code is going to be executed by the computer. And once the computer executes this machine code, then we can see the output. And if required, it will ask us to provide some input. And that we already discussed how computer program was previously, right? So there is something called input buffer. There is something called output buffer. So using input buffer and output buffer, the computer can take the input and can provide the output. This is the process actually how the computer works.
and this is also now you can understand why we need a programming language right in order to uh, in order to communicate with the computer we need at least one programming language why we need programming language because we can directly communicate with the computer if we know binary code but it is extremely difficult it is not possible you can say to write code using binary language right so to to help us right to help us this pro uh, in order to help us to communicate with the computer this programming language comes into picture even the programming language comes into picture once you write you cannot directly execute this program on your machine because even and uh, even you are using any programming language to write the code it is not in binary format then the compiler is there right the compiler does the internal work to convert the uh, the programming language code into binary code and then that binary code is going to be executed by the machine right so now you understand why why we need why we need machine because to perform some complex operations so machines are basically used to make our life easier right without machine uh, imagine uh, without computer or without atm machine if you want to withdraw money then what is the process you have to go to the you have to enter the bank you have to stand in the queue you have to fill up the form you have to submit that form to the cashier the cashier will check and verify your bank account then only he will give you the money right but the, all this process are simplified by using machine you can go to your nearest machine within seconds or within minutes you will get your money back so machines are basically used to make our life easy right is that clear or not yes why we need a computer language and why a uh, computer i hope you understand right okay yes. okay so th there is something called interface right so what is the use of interface see as a developer you are writing up uh, you are doing some coding you are develop developing some applications right do you think that uh, this application is going to be used by only you no suppose uh, think the uh, developer team of uh, whatsapp think the developer team of facebook the developer developing uh, facebook or whatsapp for their own purpose or for their uh, for end user end user means the normal user we are the user right so whenever you are writing any program or any application we are not developing the application for our own purpose we are developing the application for some company some for some for uh, corporate right or some uh, general purpose use only right so in order to the so in order to the end user uh, if the end user wants to use your application then there should be an interface yes or no right see so uh, see if you are going to atm machine so there will once you insert the atm card one interface will come or not you will ask you choose the language you will select the language then all the instructions are coming into that language and the end user can perform the operation and get the money back uh, money or whatever thing if you want to check the uh, balance then you can check the balance if you want to withdraw the money then he can withdraw the money right or not so interface is there so as a programmer we need to write the code right even and we also need to provide one interface for the end user so the end user can come and use that interface and do the necessary actions or operations yes or no yes 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 right yes so is, yes yeah in the atm machine whenever we are uh, doing some transaction do you know what is happening happening in the background what are the server is used in in the background how the servers are communicating with each other do you have any idea as a end user no and even we don't require to know all these things now what is our requirement we only need to we only need one interface using that interface we need to do our transactions only we do not know worry about what is happening in the background right but imagine 
while you are withdrawing the money you are getting some error right the transaction get failed then what you will do you will inform the same thing to your bank or not then what the bank uh, will do then the bank uh, then the bank will communicate with the company who developed the application or not then what the company will do he will provide that uh, error or information error information to whom to the programmer only and we are the programmer so we need to check what why the transaction is get failed right when you, we will get the information about the transaction right what is exactly happening why the transaction is get failed we will get information then we will debug the same code we'll uh, try to recreate the same scenario and then we will once we identify what is exactly the issue then we can resolve the issue so this is the job of a programmer right programmer is responsible for creating the application programmer is responsible for providing an interface to the end user programmer is also responsible if the end user face any kind of error then the programmer responsibility is to resolve that error clear or not In, any question or any doubt hello no as of now okay fine fine okay so now you understand what is uh, the need for a programming language and uh, what is the role of a program is that clear Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, now let us learn something interesting. Uh, one is high-level programming language, and uh, one is low-level programming language, right? In your academics, you might know, uh, yeah, or or it, it might be asked in the interview also. What is the difference between high-level programming language or low-level programming language, right? So, if you have a look at this diagram. So broadly, programming languages are divided into two categories. One is low level, another is high level. In low level, you can see machine language and assembly language. And in the high level, we have uh, 100,000 types of programming language. Here I'm mentioning some of them. C, C++, Java, C, Sir, Python. Apart from this, you have PHP, you have FSAP, you have VP.NET, you have Go, you have R. So there are many other programming languages which are comes under high level programming languages, right? So why we need a programming language? Now in order to communicate uh, with the computer, we need a programming language, right? So this programming language, using this programming language, we will write set of instructions. And this set of instructions are going to be converted into machine code. And these machine code instructions are going to be executed by the computer, right? But here, why we have machine language, uh, now we need to understand machine language, we need to understand assembly language, and we also need to understand these three, right? So what is machine language? Machine language is nothing but, you can say, the binary language. Binary language, uh, you can say, the language is zero and one. So whenever you uh, write any program using zero and one, then that is nothing but your machine language. And machine language, do not require a compiler right we can directly provide the machine language to the computer and the computer can understand it then you you then you will say if the compile if in machine language compiler is not required then why the assembly language high level language comes into picture we can use machine language but believe me out of one lakh students only one student can understand machine language out of one lakh only one can understand machine language and type code using machine language. That means it is very difficult to understand. It is very difficult to understand the machine language. It is very difficult to compile the machine language, right? It is very difficult to write a program using machine language. That's why machine language is not suitable for us to learn and write program, right? So initially when the machines are introduced, at that time, Machines are not used for general purpose. They are only used in the laboratories, right? So they are uh, only used for laboratories. And in that time, they are using, uh, initially they are using machine language to write the code. 
But later they thought that let us simplify this and use the machine for some other purposes, right? So why they thought that? Because they thought that using machine language, we cannot uh, uh, write the programs or the developer cannot, all the developer cannot write the program so that the program can be, or the application can be used for general purpose. Let us think something and let us introduce something else which can simplify the machine language. So they introduced assembly language. So assembly language, uh, in somehow, in some uh, some point or some level, you we learn in our academics. You you might be learn something called microprocessor, right? So this is nothing but similar to assembly language. In assembly language, it will reduce the complexity somehow uh, comparing to machine language. In assembly language, we use generally symbols. Symbols means are small, soft, deep, right? So these kind of symbols we use to develop or to write programs using assembly language. Even, even once, uh, even though uh, we are using assembly language, out of 100 students, only one student can understand assembly language. It is that complexity. It is better than machine language because in machine, out of one lakh, only one student can understand. But in assembly, out of 100 students, only one student can understand assembly language. So in academics, they learn assembly and they forget assembly, that's it, right? And when you are uh, developing any application using assembly language, which is not the machine code, so we need to convert that assembly language code to what? Machine language. And at that time, we are using something called assembler, right? That is a translator. Uh, uh, don't worry about the translator. Uh, uh, in our upcoming sessions, we'll discuss exactly what is translator, what is the role of a translator, what are the different kind of translators, which translator is used mostly nowadays. We'll discuss everything, right? So assembly language, it somehow reduced the complexity of a machine language, but not that much, right? Then, then they introduced something called high-level language. So this high-level language completely reduce the complexity of assembly language. Okay. Now, if a hundred students try to learn the assembly level uh, high-level language, more than ninety-five students or even you can say hundred percent student can learn and develop or write applications using high-level languages. Right. So high-level languages are something similar to your English-like language. So whatever code you are going to write. You are writing using English language, right? And this language makes the life or the job of a programmer simpler, right? Anybody nowadays, any uh, CSE background student or any other background student or a, even a general student who is not uh, belongs to any engineering, right? He can learn and uh, write code using C and C++. Even you can see some ad advertisement, the five-year students learning programming from white and junior, right? Yes or no? So anybody can nowadays can learn and they, uh, develop application using high level languages. And the examples are C, C++, Java, C++, Python, etc. So if you learn any programming language, that's it. And most of the programming languages are going to be same with a little bit different in syntactical error and uh, will be different from uh, some concept or some features, right? So these are the categories of high level and low level languages. Is that clear? Hello? Hello? Yes, clear, clear. Okay. Okay. Now, so if someone asks you what is the difference between high level and low level, you can answer this like it is a programmer friendly language high level it is a machine friendly language because we are the code is written using machine it is memory efficient it is uh, high level is high memory efficient less memory efficient it is easy to understand it is difficult to understand it is simple to debug it is complex to debug uh, it is simple to maintain complex to maintain it is portable it is non portable so what is portable, what is non-portable, I will explain later, right? So in simple word, we can say, suppose you write one application in Windows operating system. If that application is going to be run on other operating system like uh, Linux and Mac, with the same uh, application code, 
then it is going to be said as a protein. If it is not executed, suppose you develop an application in Windows and if that application is not uh, executing on Linux and Mac, then it is not protein. So whenever we are writing machine level language, so we need to write the machine code based on the operating system, based on the memory, based on the processor, based on the hardware architecture. That means the code we are written, it is specific to that machine where we are going to execute the code. So this code is not going to be executed on a different machine, right? So this is why it is saying as uh, non-portable. It can run on any platform. It is machine dependent, the same thing. Any platform means any operating system. It is machine dependent means on the uh, on the machine where we write the code, it is going to be executed on the same machine only. It is not going to be executed on other machine. Okay, it needs compiler or interpreter for the translation. Um, and that we will discuss because we are, uh, already I show you. So whenever we are writing any program using high level language, then we need to convert that code into machine code. And the compiler is there to convert the uh, programming language code into machine code. Apart from compiler, we have something called interpreter. We'll discuss what is compiler, what is interpreter, what is the difference between them, how they compile the uh, code of a program. So that we will discuss. And here it needs assembler. So suppose you are uh, developing any application using machine language, then assembler is not required, right? Because you are writing the code using machine language. But if you are uh, writing the code using assembly level language, assembly language, uh, assembly level language is not the machine language. In that case, it needs assembler for a translation, right? So it is used widely for programming. It is not commonly used, right? So these are the differences between high level language and the low level language. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Now, now uh, uh, when uh, we are going to develop any application, we call it as a software, right? So we need to understand the uh, term software in detail. Right, so, so, so we should not like uh, in our academics, we are thinking that software is a collection of a program, right? So we need to understand what exactly a software is. See, this is a calculator. So whenever I'm uh, pressing one, it will uh, display your one, two, it will display two. Some buttons are there, plus minus uh, multiplication buttons are there, right? And we can perform different kind of uh, arithmetic operations using a calculator. So calculator is a software. So what exactly happening behind each button? So whenever you press one, there is a program written for one, button one. There is also another program written for button two. The same thing for button three. Any kind of uh, uh, plus symbol, minus symbol, multiplication, for each and everything, there is a program written behind each. That means this calculator is nothing but set of programs or not? Yes or no? So this calculator is a software, we can say, but for each of this button, we have written some program. So calculator is not nothing but set of a program. So we can say that set of a program is nothing but a software, right? Okay. Yes or no? You understand? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But for uh, but for IT standard, according to IT standard, we are saying the software is a digitalized and automated process. So we need to understand two terms here. What is a digitalized and what is automated process, right? Suppose, uh, let's take an example of AC, right? If you set the timer automatically to turn off the AC after one hour, then after one hour, the AC is going to be off or not? Yes, it is going to be off. That means if you set the timer, then after the, once the timer is reached, then the AC is going to be off. So it is automatically uh, making the uh, AC off or not. So it is automated. Again, using digits, you can send the temperature of the AC or not. So you, in your machine, you have digit or some arrows like symbol. Using those symbol, you can set the temperature or not. So using a digit, you can set the temperature. So these are managed by something called software inside the AC. So inside the AC, there is one software for this automated process. There is some software for this digitalized process. So these are nothing but uh, software, right? You understood? Yes or no? Yes, we understood. Now let us understand types of software, right? 
so software basically classified into two types and uh, here i'm not going to explain many things because uh, these are not required for us yes but uh, i will give you some overview right one is the system software and another is application software so system software nothing but operating system linker loader system support system development these are nothing but your system software and application software is general purpose or application specific right okay so application okay system software basically it is used to manage the application software right see in your machine if windows operating system is not there can you run anything can you run a, a notepad can you run visual studio can you install and, uh, can you run a gel editor anything no we can't your operating system is a system software which support other applications similarly think that compiler if you write the program the compiler is not there do you think that your program is going to be executed by the operating system no compiler interpreter assembler they are also there to support the applications right so, so these are nothing but uh, system software is basically uh, used for a general purpose and they have limitations right you cannot use them apart from their own responsibility right now coming to application software application software is basically designed for end user right suppose you are using uh, uh, facebook right facebook is a application anybody can use it you are using ms office ms office is a application software you can use it right oracle installed on your uh, uh, machine you are performing some database kind of operations so oracle is a application software yes or not so they are basically you uh, they are specifically designed for end user and system software is basically designed for general purpose general purpose in the sense to support other applications in the machine 